Hi guys, welcome to my channel. What have we got today? What have we got issues? If you watched the last video, you can see the main problems. I'm not talking about the good old rain. And I've got no cup of tea. But I've done many Jexa videos on the K4s and 5s, 600s. I've done the K7, 750. So check out the links at the end of the video. Um, well worth a watch. And also how well they sound. Yes, it's still bloody cold. It's still January. So what's wrong with this little baby? Obviously been down the road, we're talking hole here, hole here, the start, the exhaust, and all stuff I'm going to show you once we get in the shed. But anyway, it's a K2 600 2002. Nice little bike, let's get on with it. Well, she's in the shed, and this is where the magic happens. I always wanted to say that. What have we got to do with this bike? Well, front fairing has got to come off, and I've got to either decide whether I need to buy a new one of these, which is bloody hard to do. The K2 is now 16 years old. Um, parts are getting scarce and people want £150 for a nose cone. You've got to think of the value of this bike. £150 on top of the value of this bike. Any profit or pleasure you can have out of this bike is going to be ruined by paying £150. And they're black, they're not even the blue colour. And the other ones I found for sale, literally I was damaged this one. So, you know, I suppose what's happened to this bike now is that the early ones crashed been stashed and crashed away. Other people have done that stupid street fighter look on them and the other ones are in immaculate condition so there's very few parts and then if you've got few parts that really does demand a high price. Anyway so the fairings are all going to come off. I take the same view as a ped as the motorbikes. As you guys know I either do big bike reviews or I fix peds. Um, so there's always uh, two of my viewers you know you've got the ones that are the big bikes I've got the people also who actually just like watching my videos for the content. And I've got the ped guys that ask me 101 questions, even though there's probably a video out there already. So this is a big bike. Let me show you what I need to have a look at and address on this bike straight away. Here we have the first problem. Big hole, and it's loose. The second one, as you can see, cracked, scratched, very loose. This bit here, I know how it is done, a disc lock. Can you see the usual chunk? Someone's around it back and spanked in here and it's broke. Again, bloody hard to get this. This is exhaust has took a, quite a battering from one issue. It's a pretty exhaust. That will probably come up. This won't and the scratches here won't. Um, I can't decide. It's just not worth. It sounds lovely. It's not worth replacing this. It just isn't worth it. These pegs are alright, they're high, but Jex is always set back. You'll find about this much compared to a Kawasaki or Honda and so on. So you do get used to bringing your legs slightly back. Annoying though, bolts, missing bolts. You know, a few pence gets this bolt put back on here. There are some scratches down here, there is nothing you're going to do with this. Honestly, it'd be mental to try and replace the whole fairing. And again, missing bolts. You know, it's my bugbear this really is. Bolts need to go back in here. The tank's good condition. Obviously, that didn't take any wax. And there's a the usual telltale tiny bit here that you can't see. Obviously, because it's raining. But it's there. It does have a towel tidy, though. It's always nice to see. Then we get to the dash. Well, what's wrong here? Traditionally, the FI light. Guys, can you see that? It will say F1. Can you see it? Well, that's generally the Lambda sensor. The person decided to get a new ECU on this. That wasn't it. It's the Lambda sensor. There's two ways of going around this. A new Lambda sensor or a bypass. But generally, the bypasses aren't brilliant. And of course, this one here. Can you see that guys? I'm pushing it quite hard, it's doing nothing. Now, I've had this on the peds, so sometimes working on all sorts of bikes work. These switches are left out in all weathers, so I'm going to take the switch apart completely, WD it all up, clean up the little electrodes and so on, and that's what I think it is. Failing that, because they put a new ECU on it, they may have not put it in, maybe the right model, I don't know, but I've got to investigate it. Now let's couple that with the side stand jamming down. Um, obviously you go to knock it up, you put it in gear and she stalls immediately. That's because the sensor there. So I'm going to clean the sensor up and I'm going to 
spray up, clean up and make sure the side stand flicks up as it should. It's dangerous. That's why your bike conks are there. These weights are loose. Um, generally a good old tidy up. So let's get on with, as I say, taking all the fairing off, the tank off, the seat off, stripping it down, seeing what I've actually got and seeing what I need to fix and then fixing it. Weighing up the odds whether it's worth buying new parts. Sometimes be like early days of Wheeler Dealer. I don't know if any of you ever watched that. I seem to be Mike Brewer and Ed China. I do like the programme. In the early years, they used to buy second-hand motors. They'd go to scrap yards, knock out dents, spray, and that's suppose where I am. Then they started getting a much bigger budget because they're sponsored and so on, and on TV for God's sake, unlike my little YouTube channel. And uh, they started getting a bit more extravagant and you know buying new parts, and they started souping the parts up and selling them. But if you look at the profit in the early days, they were 150, 200 pounds, and he's rubbing his hands to give him money in the bank. And you started looking, seeing that's 45 hours, and they made a couple of grand. Um, yeah, all well and good. And now it's in America with a new guy. Anyway, enough about Wheeler Dealer. About this bike. There you go, guys. So, you're going to, with me now, step by step, watch as I take it apart. See the faults, hopefully get them fixed. Also, he said I had it serviced. Again, back to peds for me. Um, a bit of paper saying you've serviced it doesn't mean it's been done. And I want to make sure it's been done. So I'm going to take the plugs out, check the oil, check the oil filter, check the air filter. Make sure they've all been done properly. Um, it's got a new chain and sprocket on the back. Uh, also a new back tyre, so I want to make sure that's in line. I rode this back last night. It was one degree. They'd freshly salted the roads, and these are summer tyres. I was giving it a little bit, I must admit. Um, and my fingers lost somewhere around about 10 miles. You know how cold they get. Um, but it did ride quite well. Um, the 600s, as I said in my other videos, the 600s are your fun little bike, single seat. That's all you really need them. 750s, now they are your all-rounder, you know. Um, as I said in my first video, what they do, they make brake horsepower. And the 1000cc obviously wants to try and kill you. Anyway, guys, enough chat. Let's get on with it. So, just been serviced. Can and air filter, that's clean. Um, that actually looks new rather than just uh, cleaned. I've got the spray. I've done it several times. They never seem to come any cleaner for me. But, under here, as I showed you before guys, there's a little sponge at the back. Can you see that? What does it take to take that out and give it a clean? Do you know? That's full of crappy oil. Um, that's mixed with a little bit of water that the, uh, allows the evaporation and so on and moistures and so on so this could do the clean. Next plugs. So 10mm come round the sides of the air filter at the bottom that cover the actual carbs and it's an ordinary Phillips screw. A few little clips either side, a couple of little pipes remembering where they go and you get The air box off. This had water in it, only a small amount, and there's a pipe on the other side here that goes out the engine. It wasn't blocked, but it had a little bit of um, it's called coffee. Um, it's like a gunk when oil and petrol and water and so on mix together. Um, it's natural wastage. Uh, the pipe wasn't that blocked, but it had a small amount in there, so I've cleaned that out. Next, we have the plugs. I've said this before guys, do them individually or pop the HT lead, the coil itself pack, and put it back in the hole you got it from. It's quite easy to mix them up. And here we have the plug, just serviced. Doing it slowly. Can you see that guys? It's pretty black isn't it? Um, Remember, these are manual choke, okay, not injection. So you can leave the actual choke on just a little bit too long each ride and it will blacken the plug. However, if you look, it's all black down here. That would indicate to me, indicate even, that it wasn't tightened down properly and these were all finger loose. Here's a pack I made earlier. <laughs> I'm getting good at this little back and forth bit, aren't I? Um, I'm going to change all of the plugs um, for nice iridium plugs, um, not an awful lot of money on eBay, 30 odd quid, you go to the garage, you're going to pay a bit more for them. So changing the plugs, airfoot was really good, a little bit of a tidy up down there, 
Next, I suppose, I better check the oil as well, because I'm not confident that, you know, the plugs were that new as they said they were. So, that's half a service done. Let's get on with it. There's always a few little top tips. <clears throat> Number two had been in a while. Number one and three came out really easy. Number four completely jammed in. Um, it took me ages even to get the actual coil pack HT lead out. Um, that hadn't been changed for a very, very, very long time. So it was running on three, four. I mean, it wasn't that bad, the plug. Been a very long time and very hard to get out. Their box, top tip, I suppose, putting this back on. I always use a little bit of grease just around these bits here, just they slot nicely back on the carbs. Don't overdo it, it's just they slot down nicely. If it was um, warmer outside and the rubbers were uh, really soft, it wouldn't matter, but you know, you can split them this or whatever, they're really cold, as you know, I work in the freezing cold, and yeah, it's still snowing outside. Go figure. Anyway, let's pop this back on, plugs all back in, put the air filter back on, get all that done, lower the petrol tank then. Um, it was a job that I didn't expect to have to do, but I was going to check anyway, so it's always worth checking. And that's what I said, guys. Regardless if someone said they've done it, check it yourself. Then you know it's done. Um, this should improve acceleration now and starting as well. We're going to look at the um, oil filter. If that's brand spanking new and the oil looks good, I'm fine with it. If it looks dirty, then I'll have to change that as well. And uh, somewhere in my shed, I'm pretty sure I've got an oil filter for this. And definitely got a good 8 litres of oil. Not you need to put it in here, but I always keep it topped up in case. Tank just placed down. I might have traced the wires for the lamber sensor yet. Um, we're going to call that an instrument service. The filter looks clean, the oil's not too bad a colour, and obviously the canyon filter was clean, the plugs weren't done, so an instrument service, but worth definitely doing. And if you look to my side, because the camera picking it up, snowing, said light rain later today at 2 o'clock, it's like 10 a.m. now. Damn it. Right, switch and lamba sensor next. As this has obviously had a little bit of a pushing and throwing with this cracked um, front nose cone, which I'm going to uh, bond up. Um, I'm going to check all the actual connectors and spray them up WD-40 or generic maintenance spray and um, go from there. I'm also going to spray up and clean up this lock as well, one key. Um, so I want to make sure it's clean. So, yeah, short little one there. Battery on charge as well while I'm chatting. I should have done that much, much earlier, shouldn't I? But let's get on with it. Always worth taking it apart, guys. Um, there was a little bit of uh, crap in there. I've had it all apart, put it back together again. And now she literally, as you touch the button, works. Why don't you just splash loads of WD-40 on the outside of here, you ask? Mark, tell us why you don't do that. Because it won't get in there. They're designed to not let water penetrate through, but after many, many years sitting outside, it will get into little bits and bobs. So take it apart, clean it all up, spray your water re repellent, um, spray an air maintenance spray, and then pull it back together again after wiping it. Pull it back together again. And then what you get, if I just remonstrate now, turn it on, I'm going to start the bike, but listen, straight away, every single time that, that works. So that's the job done. Now onto the Lamber sensor. So, <clears throat> if someone out there is going to tell me now, no Mark, the K2 doesn't have a Lamber sensor, then I say, that's why I can't find one. Been all through it, and I cannot find a Lamber sensor. Not even a wire goes to it. So, if it didn't have one, or someone's completely took it off. It's on the K4 and K5s. Um, water was a little bit low, so I'm glad I took the fairing parts off for that. Oil was a little bit low, so I've topped that up. Oil was actually quite good, I tested it. I mean, you know, the look and the feel of it wasn't like brown, dirty water. Felt quite good. Um, the water only took, I don't know, half a cup of uh, put fresh antifreeze in there. The connectors, um, some of the connectors were a little bit, you know, um, where they get water on them and they go like sort of greeny, bluey colour. So I've cleaned them off, put them all back together again. Um, some earths as well. Um, obviously had to tank back up because I wanted to check that I wasn't going mad, that it really did not have... A Lamber sensor. I thought all bikes had them, even with choke. Anyway, so where are we now? Definitely the ECU was changed. Um, I can see it's a second hand one, and it's for K1 and K2, so I'm happy with that. And I've took every connector apart that I can. They can be bloody hard to get hold of, I tell you. Some clip in, you've got to push down, others you've got to clip out. I mean, they really hurt your hands as well. I know it's cold, but it's worth taking them out, worth checking them, and putting them back in. 
So for the service side and the electric start side, um, we'll all go. Next will be the stand because that's really stiff. Um, the switch is fine, the micro switch. I'm just going to use a uh, maintenance spray on that. And then I suppose I get to this little baby. Um, as I showed you before, it's all cracked here and cracked here. So I'm going to reverse it. I'm going to bond it. Um, I'll decide about the hole whether I use a bit of filler on that or not. Um, I'm not going to buy another one, guys. It's just not worth doing. They're too hard to get hold of and way too expensive, especially to improve this when it's got the bashed exhaust and a few scratches anyway. Um, so let's get it all back to, well, let's, let's seal that, get all this back together as it should be, and then clean it all, and then uh, see what your eyes like. But I very much doubt it's going to be today, so you're not going to see that. I'll do another video of a walk round and explanation of this. That wasn't my first video, it had been bloody raining yesterday, and today it's snowing, can't quite win, but it is January. So, refit all, glue that, I'm not going to show you to use a glue gun and I'm going to bond over. If you do use a glue gun, guys, um, microwave meal trays, you know, the thick plastic you get there. I keep them, I cut them into shape, I um, not epoxy resin, but I use a, a very good heat glue gun. I'm about the little ones, I've got a great big thing here. And um, I glue it up and I push that on and make sure it's all sealed. I turn it over, polish it, see what it looks like. I may use some filler, I don't know. Um, obviously the mud guard, I'm going to keep my eye at one of them. I mean, £30, £40 for one of them is not too bad, but £150 for a nose cone is just outweighs everything you want to do to this bike. So, let's get on with it and um, I'll show you what it looks like a bit later on with all the panels back on. And um, yeah, let's get on with it. Serviced, glued the front, sorted the starter switch out, it was also the clutch switch, rear brake wasn't working on the uh, electric so I sorted that out as well, and a couple little bits and bobs, F1 light, damn thing still on. So it may be something to do with the new ECU, uh, as in, I can't find the Lambda sensor and I can't find a um, plug off point for it either. It's not the end of the world, it does still run and it's choked model so it's not going to mess around too much, but she turns on. And she runs and zigs over. Yes, I've got to fit the mirrors properly. Let me now get her out in the uh, snow. So you can have a little look of her. Um, the front end, I said I bonded it all. Um, I probably want to work a little bit on the fill on the front of it, and then I may blow it over, put a little putylene sticker over there for the time being, just to so it doesn't recognise and annoy me so much. Anyway, let's get it outside so you can have a look in the snow um, and see a little K2. Well, welcome to the snow. Here's the front a little bit. Anyway. She needs a lovely wash now, which is pretty, you can't deny that, can you? Front end. The exhaust, do you know what, I fancied even cutting it from where it's damaged and making a short stubby. I may have a go at that, you know, I may do another video on that. 
Anyway, just topped up the oil now. 52 plate, December 2002 this was. Back end's quite nice, really. I do like the double port exhaust. And down this side, obviously, I'm not going to try and move it around for you guys because it's hammering down with bloody snow. Look at my footprints. <laughs> but there you go, guys. Anyway, please like, subscribe. Do check out my videos. As I said, I'll put the links around for the K4s that all sound very nice and the K7750. Um, but other than that, guys, this is a done job, as I say. Uh, it does look pretty when I first got it. I'm now going to wash it. Well, no, maybe not now. A washer, cleaner, and I'll do a walk around of a, on another video. I may even get to ride up and down the road. Anyway, there you go, guys. As I said, like, subscribe, and I'll keep making them. Take care of yourselves.